Hey, my beautiful lost souls. Yo, I feel like the quality has gotten a little bit better. <laughs> I'm still on my laptop though because my phone takes absolutely way too long to upload YouTube videos. So y'all, until I get some money and buy an actual HD, HD lens camera, we sticking with this, okay? We real ghetto with it. But today I just wanted to talk about colorism, my experience having colorism as a brown skinned black girl, a darker skinned black girl and um how colorism is still affecting the black community um the reason why i'm filming this filming this video is because this very popular tiktok personality by the name of ek and she's popular in on black tiktok if you are on white tiktok with the snow bunnies you're probably definitely not gonna see her she's ghetto like she's known for broadcasting her extremely chaotic ghetto stereotypical like black american life of a of being basically she's basically kind of a single baby mother um her experience with her baby daddy and their tumultuous toxic relationship um he actually physically abuses her um anyways um basically she went viral for sitting on live and coming at a dark-skinned black girl for no reason because apparently she said that the person commented the girl the woman commented that her daughter get essayed or something like that that was a lie she pulled out her ass to justify her being colorless that girl didn't say nothing about her daughter she just pulled that shit out her ass and she started going in for no reason um mind you this is right after she was caught on live i think the other day her baby daddy whooped her ass on live. And so basically the woman was just commenting like, why do you keep going on live? Like you deserve better sis, like you need to leave. And she dragged her. She was like, oh, you know what I mean? To keep it real with you, I'm a light skinned girl. I benefit from colorism. You're never gonna reach the heights that I make it because you're dark skinned. You know what I mean? To be honest, I only get famous. I mean, I only get popular. I'm only getting views because I'm lighter skinned and I can do what I want because I benefit from colorism. That's why I do the same thing. These She literally, it's so insane because you rarely see people that benefit from colorism actually say they benefit from colorism because in order to acknowledge the fact that you benefit from colorism, you need to stop benefit. That would be you also, like the next step is to take accountability and after taking accountability and stop benefiting from colorism. That is why a lot of people will sit back and they will let colorism slide. They will not publicly speak on it because what? They're not gonna stop. They don't wanna stop benefiting from colorism. Same thing with racism, right? When some white people see people, other white people being racist, a lot of them won't say anything because it's like they benefit from it. So that, you know what I mean? It's like not really my problem. And so, but for the first time, like she literally acknowledged that if I was a dark skinned girl, I probably wouldn't be as far as I am, which is kind of true. You know what I mean? Because she is very lighter skinned, warning, she is black. Because she is very lighter skinned, she's able to do certain things and get away with it because it's more palatable because she's lighter. But if we saw a dark skinned girl being the black stereotype, Nobody would be fucking with this. Everybody would be like, oh my gosh, this is ghetto. Like, you're bringing down the black community. Da -da 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 -da. And I just basically want to talk about my experience with colorism growing up as a child, as a darker skinned black girl, right? Um, I don't know what age I was taught colorism. I can't point to a specific age, but I can point to people saying colorist things in my life, like making fun of other people saying, oh my gosh, you're so dark. Especially like the early 2000s, colorism was very normalized. Like nobody saw anything wrong with it. People would make jokes on other people like, oh my gosh, you're too dark. Oh my gosh, you're burnt. Oh, like I would always hear my family say, oh, I can't, I can't get in the sun. I can't step out in the sun because I don't want to get darker. And that's when I kind of learned at a very young age that getting darker is not a good thing. I learned that through my family and them saying things, not to me, but them saying things to themselves like, oh, I don't want to get darker. So I'm going to stay out the sun. Um, <clears throat> And then in fifth grade, I was heavily bullied um, by 
the kids in my school for being like one of the only black people. It was a predominantly Hispanic school. Um, little bit of sprinkle of white people in there and then a little bit of sprinkle of black people. Um, but there were less black people overall and I was heavily bullied for my skin tone. It caused me to be really insecure. Um, you know, even my own, my own friend who I was really close with, we were passing notes and you know what I mean? Just cracking jokes. And he was like, oh my gosh, like, shut up. Like you look like burnt toast or like you look like a roach or, oh my gosh, you're so dark. Like you need to stay out the sun. That left a huge imprint on me. And since that day, like around fifth grade, it's sad like I didn't even want to be a kid anymore like I didn't want to hang out in the sun like I was so scared of getting darker I literally would walk out with hoodies I would literally try my best to be fully clothed even in the car like if the sun is shining in through the window in the car I would literally try my best to like wear jeans and shit so my skin won't get darker because being darker is this horrible thing right let me tell you guys how I grew out of colorism for anybody that's still struggling, because a lot of people still struggle with colorism, which I just want to let you know, if you are still struggling with colorist thoughts, like you don't want to be darker, you don't want to, look, it's okay. As long as you're not making and judging other people for being darker, that's okay. Like internalized colorism is okay because damn, bitch. Like, holy shit. Anyways internalized colorism is okay because that is what you were conditioned to believe but start having and saying self affirmations like i love my darker skin tone i look pretty with my winter tone and my summer tone like that's a huge thing in the black community right your winter tone versus your summer skin tone right a lot of people who are like close to my skin tone in the winter time, I look like this part of my arm. Y'all see where my vein is at? I look like this part of my arm. In the summertime, we tend to look like this part of my arm, right? Just a little bit darker. You see the difference? Like this little slither of lightness right here where the sun didn't touch. And then boom. So um, that's a huge thing in the black community. And it's always been like a thing like, oh, I like my winter tone. Like people would just always say, oh, I like my winter tone. Like I don't like my summer tone. Why don't you like your summer tone? Because you're darker. So just practice. So like finally, I started to learn to appreciate my skin tone. I think around it was ninth grade. Ninth grade, I finally came around. It was one summer. I got darker and I absolutely loved it. I think that summer is the summer I accidentally tanned and I got sunburnt for the first time. Um, but I loved my darker skin tone. Like I actually fell in love with myself. I was like, oh my gosh, I look like a copper penny. Like I love it. I look like an old rusty copper penny and I kind of like it. So say self-affirmations. Like I love myself, whether I'm a light whether I'm lighter in my skin tone or I'm darker in my skin tone, my darker skin tone looks so good. You can see the melanin. Melanin protects me from the sun. Like saying those affirmations is going to help decondition your mind to associating darker skin with bad attributions, like not being beautiful, right? Um, Yeah, just practicing self-love and not engaging with that part of society that's still colorist, right? Um. But yeah, I'm still like, I still experience colorism to this day, y'all. Like literally go check out my TikTok. It's Soraya Damberville, S-Y-R-I-A-H-D-A-M-B-R-E-V-I-L-L-E. I made a video basically about texturism in the black community and how this girl was praising this mixed biracial girl for having long, loose hair. And all I said was like, hey, you know, we should stop doing that. Like, it's very harmful. We should start teaching kids to love themselves because of their personality and because of what's inside. Not because of all these features. You got small eyes. You got a small nose. Your body is slim. Like, we should start teaching kids not to be so physical. You know what I mean? Not to be so superficial, right? When I tell y'all the mixed, the light skin, the biracial warriors were in my comments tearing me down, they was calling me all types of insecure. Mind you, I didn't say one insecure thing in the entire video, but why did they assume that I was insecure, right? 
I didn't say anything about being insecure at all in that entire video. But you want to know why they started talking about insecurity? Why did you think they called me insecure? The video featured a biracial, lighter-skinned girl with super long hair that was actually straight. I think her hair is uh, straight. Type 1 hair. And me, a darker-skinned girl with curly hair, not as long because I just cut my hair, commented on that video. Why do you think they called me insecure? Colorism, right? They And it wasn't even just insecurity. It was, oh, you're projecting. You're projecting your insecurities. I didn't project nothing onto that child. I did not even really comment on her like that. All I said was that her ends need to be clipped a little bit because that's another problem in our community as well. Like a lot of girls are scared to cut their hair because they want to hold on to length so bad. European beauty standards. Our hair is not meant to look like that. Curly hair naturally goes up and out. Hence afros. Our hair for the majority of us, is never going to go straight and down. Even my curly hair, it goes like this. You know what I mean? It goes like this. Like, imagine a U, a downward U, like that. It doesn't go straight down. So my hair is not going to look like its actual length. But they was all in the comments, quick to call me insecure, and I was projecting. And I was so confused because it's like, I'm not insecure, but y'all want me to be insecure so bad. Y'all think I'm insecure because you think I want what you have because that is your own projection. Let me tell you something. Nobody can ever, nobody can ever like disrespect me. They can never try to diss me because whenever you try to insult somebody, you're insulting them with what you view as an insult. I wouldn't insult you with something that I think is a compliment, right? Because that wouldn't make sense. I'm insulting you with what I think is bad. People were insulting me with my darker skin tone because they view darker skin tone as bad. That's not me though. So they was quick to call me insecure. And one thing, here's what I don't respect about a lot of colorists, right? People who benefit from colorism who are colorists. Here's what I don't respect about them. Y'all need darker skinned people, especially darker skinned black women. Y'all love using darker skinned black women to make yourself feel better about yourself. And I have zero. When I tell y'all, I have zero respect for anybody who uses somebody else to make themselves feel better about themselves. That is corny behavior. If you are truly light-skinned and you're the cream of the crop, that's you, sis, do you. Why do you need darker-skinned women to make yourself feel better about yourself? If you was really winning in society like how y'all supposed to be and how like, how, like how y'all love to say y'all do, why do you constantly bring up darker-skinned black women to make yourself feel better about yourself? Damn. Anyways, ignore the noise in the back. My problem with colorists, especially lighter skinned women, biracial, or just people who aren't black, they want to live in a society so bad where they completely benefit from colorism and there's dark skinned women walking around. Like, they want darker skinned black women or just girls that don't look like them to yearn to be what they like. Y'all want that desperation that used to be there, right? Back when colorism was so normalized and dark-skinned girls used to hate themselves. Literally, people shitting on you for no reason because you're dark-skinned. Y'all want to live in a time like that. Sad. That is so sad and disgusting. Like, why would you want girls to hate themselves? Why do you thrive off of women hating themselves? Like, yo, they kept calling me insecure and I was just laughing at the comments because I'm like, y'all, I'm not insecure. But y'all want me to be insecure so bad because that makes you feel better about yourself. That validates the colorism, the internalized colorism that you have in your mind. No, baby, I'm not insecure. My thing is, why is it so hard to believe that I want to be black? <laughs> like, why is it so hard to believe that I like being darker skinned? Why? Because you have that conditioned, ingrained colorism in your mind that tells you every second of the day that dark is bad, that being black is bad. So they want you to be, listen, to all my darker skinned black girls that's watching this, please, if you're insecure, at least don't let it show. Do not give these colorists the satisfaction that they want because I'm so tired. Even y'all, search up on YouTube Exotical Channel. 
search up these exoticals is basically channels for mixed biracial mainly mixed and biracial um women but also lighter skinned women who benefit from colorism who benefit from racism it is a channel where they are constantly bringing up darker skinned black women to make themselves feel better about themselves like oh that like they'll say fucked up things that are really issues but they'll try to like generalize it to something minuscule they'll say like oh y'all know the movement of black women and divesting because black men treat black women like shit sometimes yeah black women are severely mistreated in their own community anyways they'll say things like i saw a video that was like oh um you're not uh you're not uh being mistreated you're just uh you're just unkempt like or some some bullshit like basically these women these colorist racist women are relishing like and that's the thing that ticks me off like why are you relishing in the fact that you're benefiting from all this like if you want to benefit from it cool go about your day but why do you need to rub it in and relish like oh yes like you just want a trophy you're not confident for real a lot of these women and that's what i say that's why I say, like, a lot of these women who are colorist, who are racist, I say women, but people, period. Because men too, lighter-skinned, mixed people who are colorist, y'all are not really secure. Y'all don't think y'all the shit. Because when you're the shit, you don't need to bring other people down to make yourself feel up. You already up regardless of what's around you. That's true security. Secure. When you say secure... I'm secure within myself. That means no matter what the environment is going on, I'm going to still be secure. I'm going to still be where I'm at. The fact that your security is reliant upon other people being down so you could feel up, that's not true security. That's false security. And that's why I say, if God took away your skin tone right now and made you dark, say he gave you Vigilito, would you still feel that way? Would you still feel like you the shit? No, you're not the shit because you need to bring dark skin people down. Anyways, child, I just went on a whole fucking rant. <laughs> but no, you guys, like every time I see an exotical channel, these channels for these light skins to feel good about themselves and the, the benefit they have so they can relish and all that shit, I literally block, don't recommend me the video, uninterested, get off my channel, downvote, like get off my, get off my page, period. Them exotical channels, ugh, time to go disgusting like as if y'all don't already benefit enough you want to rub it in and relish like oh my gosh and they'll say some shit like in the title it'll be some sh like some shit that's kind of like oh it's not that you're experiencing colorism you're just ugly like it's shit like that y'all i'm literally not making this up this shit popped up on my for you page i don't know why but um so all my darker skinned black people who have experienced colorism, I truly hope that y'all see that we as a whole see better days. Um, colorism is still prevalent, especially in places like New York, y'all. Like I like to say New York is stuck in 2015 because they are still very colorist out there, especially with the diversity in, in races, but also like there's a lot of Hispanics in New York and the colorism is very prevalent in the Hispanic community. I've experienced it myself. I've experienced mainly a lot of colorism really only from Hispanics. Um racism from white people, but colorism from Hispanics um it's really sad like colorism is definitely a thing in New York still, which is why I'm glad I'm not there anymore like to all my people that's from New York, y'all know. If y'all know, y'all know. Like, man, like, ugh. Anyways, I hope we see better days. Overall, colorism is corny. The C in colorism stands for corny. Um, again, if you're the shit, then you're the shit. You know what I mean? I'm not calling, I'm not coming for all like because I feel like I always have to reiterate this because people love to drag it. I'm not coming for all lighter skinned people, for all um people who are not black or just for people who are mixed race. I'm not coming for everybody. I'm coming for the ones who are colorist, who are racist, and who feel the need to rub it in and relish in their in their favoritism. Like 
move around like you're so corny and then it's like it's so hard for people to believe that i actually want to be black i wouldn't want to be anything i wouldn't want to be anybody else i wouldn't want to be anybody else like leave me alone anyways that's all i have to say you guys um and on the colorism topic and how it still affects the black community people love to pretend that shit is in the past no it's not bitch we experiencing this shit right now as we speak but yeah that's all i have to say and don't be discouraged by e kane's dumb ass words because there are plenty of successful black women out there but comment down below what y'all think be sure to like the video if you like my topic and you want to hear some more shit from me and i'll see y'all on the next one